Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 17th August 2023. Displayed here are the list of articles we are going to see today. Before we get into the discussion, I have an important announcement to make. Shankar AS Academy's pre-storming test series is about to begin from 11th September. The first test is going to happen on 18th September. The other details regarding the test series is given here. You can go through it. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this article. It says that Central Bureau of Investigation has assembled a 53 member team including Deputy Inspector Generals and women officials. This is done to probe multiple cases of violence in Manipur. The CBI is taking over 12 FIRs involving crimes against women and investigating additional cases identified during the process. A special investigation team led by DAG level official has also been established for the purpose. This is about the news article. In this context, let us revise about the CBI. Central Bureau of Investigation CBI, is India's premier investigative agency. The agency has played a vital role in upholding justice and fighting corruption since its inception. In 1941, the Special Police Establishment was created. The SPE Special Police Establishment's primary objective is to investigate cases of corruption and misconduct involving government officials during World War II. After World War II, there was still a need for central government agency to investigate cases of bribery and corruption. So the government enacted DSPE, Delhi Special Police Establishment Act 1946. This act gave the legal power of investigating cases to DSPE. Later, Sandhanam Committee on the Prevention of Corruption recommended the establishment of CBA. Based on this recommendation, CBA was set up in 1963 by the resolution of Ministry of Home Affairs. Later, CBA was transferred to Ministry of Personnel. The Special Police Establishment set up in 1941 was also merged with CBA. An important thing to note here is that CBA is not a statutory body. It is established based on the recommendation of Sandhanam Committee. It derives its power from Delhi Special Police Establishment Act 1946. Now we will see the composition of CBI. CBI is composed of officers from various disciplines to effectively handle diverse cases. CBI is structured into different divisions. Each division will specialize in specific areas such as anti-corruption, economic offenses and special crimes. CBI is headed by a director and he is assisted by a special director or additional director. The director of CBI is equivalent to the inspector general of police. He is responsible for the administration of organization. The director of CBI has a term of two years according to the Central Vigilance Commission Act 2003. In 2013, the Lokpal and Lokayukta Act amended the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act 1946. So the Lokpal and Lokayuktas Act provided a committee for appointment of CBI director. The committee is headed by Prime Minister. The other members of committee includes Leader of Opposition in Lok Sabha and Chief Justice of India or a Supreme Court judge nominated by Chief Justice. Later, Delhi Special Police Establishment Act 2014 was amended to make changes in the appointment of CBI director. This is all about the composition of CBI. Finally, let us see the functions of CBI. The most important role of CBI is to prevent the corruption and maintain integrity in administration. It also provides assistance to Central Vigilance Commission and Lokpal. Then CBI has authority to investigate cases related to corruption, economic crimes, major criminal conspiracies, crimes of serious nature and other high profile cases. It can take over investigations from state police agencies if the case is of national importance. The CBA can also conduct searches, raids to collect evidence for its investigation. It can also initiate prosecution against individuals found guilty during investigations. Finally, it can present its findings in court and collaborate with the prosecution to secure convictions. So these are the important functions of CBA. We have seen 
the creation of CBI, its composition and its important functions and powers. So this is all regarding this discussion. Let us move to the next topic. Take a look at this news article. This article is from 15th August newspaper. The news article says that ISRO is gearing up for major launch after the successful launch of Chandrayaan-3 mission. See the ISRO is planning to launch Aditya L1 mission to study the sun. The launch is likely to take place in August end or September. This is all about the news. In this discussion, let us understand about Aditya L1 mission in detail. See the Aditya L1 mission is the first Indian mission to study the sun. This mission will be launched using PSLV XL launch vehicle. As a part of Aditya L1 mission, the ISRO is planning to place a 400 kg satellite in lower earth orbit. The satellite will carry 7 payloads to observe various layers of sun such as photosphere, chromosphere and corona. Note that corona is the outermost layer of the sun. See the payloads of Aditya L1 satellite will use electromagnetic detectors to observe the sun. The payloads of Aditya L1 mission are expected to provide most crucial information about the sun. It will help us to understand the problem of coronal heating, coronal mass ejection, dynamics of space weather, propagation of particles and so on. Note that ISRO is planning to place Aditya L1 satellite in Lagrangian point 1 that is L1. Now what is this Lagrangian point and why ISRO is planning to place Aditya satellite in Lagrangian point 1? First of all, Lagrangian points are the spots in solar system. In such points, the pull of gravity from earth cancels out the pull of gravity from sun. So if we place any object at these Lagrangian points, the object will feel equally pulled toward the sun and the earth and the objects in Lagrangian points will revolve along with the earth around the sun. The major advantage of placing a spacecraft in Lagrangian points is that the spacecraft consumes less fuel to remain in such position. This is because the gravity is balanced in such Lagrangian points. So the spacecraft doesn't need to align its course often. This will help the spacecraft to save the fuel. Now coming to the type of Lagrangian points. See there are 5 Lagrangian points in Sun Earth system. Now look at the image here. Here the Lagrangian point L1 is positioned above the day side of the earth. Then L2 is positioned above the night side of the earth. Then L3 is situated on other side of the sun which is opposite the earth. And finally L4 and L5 are 60 degree ahead and behind the earth in same orbit. This is all about the Lagrangian points. Now why ISRO is planning to place Aditya satellite in Lagrangian point 1? See the ISRO has chosen Lagrangian point 1 because if we place a satellite in L1 point, the satellite has major advantage of continuously weaving the sun without any disturbance. This means that satellite couldn't experience any eclipses. So it will provide a greater advantage to the satellite to observe the solar activities continuously. So this is all about the Lagrangian points. So we have seen the Aditya L1 mission, what are the Lagrangian points and why we are placing our satellite in L1 point. So this is all about the discussion. Let us move to our next topic. Take a look at this news article. The news is that Water Resource Department of Tamil Nadu has requested the Andhra Pradesh government to increase the amount of Krishna water that is released to Chennai city. The Tamil Nadu government said that releasing extra water will help address the water deficit in Chennai. So this is all about the news. In this discussion, we will learn some important points about Krishna river. The river Krishna is the second largest river in peninsular India. Then what is the largest river in peninsular India? It is the Godavari river. See this Krishna river rises in western ghats near Mahabaleshwar in Maharashtra state. Then it flows from the west to east direction. Since Krishna is a east flowing river, it drains into Bay of Bengal. The Krishna has a total length of 1400 km and it is named after Lord Krishna. 
see the krishna river is bounded by bal ghat range on the north eastern ghats on the south and western ghats on the west now talking about the basin of krishna river see the krishna river basin extends over four states maharashtra karnataka telangana and andhra pradesh the major part of krishna basin is covered with agricultural land as the river provides plenty of water for irrigation many great empires in history like chalukyas vijayanagar bahmani kingdom flourished along the krishna river and fought for the control of its fertile delta so the krishna river basin is rich in cultural heritage the famous historical city hampi is situated on the banks of tungabhadra river which is a tributary of krishna now we will see important tributaries of river krishna the right bank tributaries are ghat prabha koina mal prabha and tungabhadra the important left bank tributaries are bhima musi paleru and munneru here note that hyderabad city is situated on the banks of musi river which is a left bank tributary of krishna river note that tungabhadra is the largest tributary of krishna and bhima river is the longest tributary of krishna now let us see the important dams constructed on the river krishna almathi dam Shri Sailam Dam, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam, Prakasham Barrage are some of the important projects on Krishna River. Also note that Koleru Lake is situated near the mouth of Krishna River. It is a freshwater lake and it gets water from both Krishna and Godavari River. Also note that it is a Ramsar site and an important bird sanctuary. So these are the important points about Krishna River which we have to know in prelims point of view. So this is all about this discussion let us move to the next topic take a look at this article our prime minister narendra modi in his independence day speech criticized the opposition parties for corruption as a retaliation the opposition pointed out a report submitted by comptroller and auditor general the opposition parties questioned why the government was silent on cag findings and has not taken any action in response to them This is the crux of the article given here in this context let us quickly go through CAG see the constitution of india under article 148 provides for a independent office of comptroller and auditor general of india CAG is the head of indian audit and accounts department he is the guardian of public purse and controls the entire financial system of the country at both the center and state levels His duty is to uphold the constitution of India and laws of parliament related to financial administration. Now let us see the appointment and tenure of CAG. CAG is appointed by President of India. He holds the office for a period of 6 years or until the age of 65 years, whichever is earlier. Remember, he is not eligible for any further appointment under the government of India. The salaries and other service conditions of CAG are determined by the parliament. See the salary of CAG is equal to the judge of Supreme Court. His salaries are charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India, which means they are not subject to the vote of Parliament. Now let us see his removal procedure. CAG can resign from his office by addressing a resignation letter to President. He can also be removed by President on the same manner as a judge of Supreme Court. In other words, it means he can be removed by president on the basis of resolution passed by the both houses of parliament with special majority now let us see the functions of cag cag submits three audit reports to the president they were audit report on appropriation accounts audit report on finance accounts and audit report on public undertakings the president lays these reports before both houses of parliament so after the president submitted the reports to the parliament The Public Accounts Committee examines these reports of CAG. Now let us see the important constitutional provisions regarding CAG. Article 148 it deals with CAG appointment oath and conditions of service. Article 149 which deals with the duties and powers of CAG. Article 150 and Article 151 also deals with the office of CAG. So this is all about the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Now let us move to the next topic. Now look at this article. The cabinet ministry has approved a new scheme called PM e-bus seva scheme. This scheme will provide organized bus services to 181 cities in India. This is aimed to improve the green mobility infrastructure around the country. 
So in this context, let us discuss the benefits of green mobility transport and what are the steps taken by government. Now let us see what is green transport. Green transport is a mode of transportation that do not negatively impact the environment or the human health. So the vehicles that use biofuel, methanol, compressed natural gas, electricity or hydrogen energy as fuel form the part of green transport system. Now let us see what are the benefits of green transport to India. The most important benefit is it reduces the India's oil dependency. If we move from petrol and diesel fueled vehicles, India's dependence on oil and cost of import can be reduced. Because today India imports 85% of its oil requirements. If we move towards the green transport, huge amount of India's imports can be reduced. The next important benefit is dealing with the climate change. As India has a mission to achieve net zero emissions by 2070, the green transport will help to address the issue of air pollution and also the issues of climate change by cutting down the greenhouse gas emissions. The next important benefit is a job creation. The government will help establishing charging stations and later franchise model and these create jobs for entrepreneurs to establish charging stations across the country. The electric vehicle industry also has a huge potential to create jobs in the country. Now we shall see what are the government initiatives taken to improve the green transport system. First is National Electric Mobility Mission Plan. It aims to achieve national fuel security by promoting hybrid and electric vehicles in the country. The second one is FAME 1. Here FAME means Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of Electric Vehicles in India. The objective of the scheme is to support the hybrid or electric vehicles market. The next important step is Automotive Mission Plan 2026. It aims at making the Indian automotive industry among the top three of the world in engineering, manufacture and export of vehicles. Another important step taken in this regard is Green Urban Transport Scheme. Under this scheme, the government aims to launch eco-friendly transportation facilities in urban areas. Finally, the government has launched Electric Vehicle Mission 2030. Also, the central government and some states offer tax credits and tax deductions for driving green vehicles. So, this will further reduce the cost of buying such green vehicles. So, these are the steps taken by government to improve the green mobility in India. So, with this, we conclude this discussion. Let us move to the next part of our discussion. Now, we have come to the prelims practice questions. Look at the first question. It is about Aditya L1 mission. Look at the first statement. Aditya L1 mission is the first space-based Indian mission to study the sun. Yes, it is correct. Look at the second statement. The mission will be launched using launch vehicle Mark 3 of ISRO. This statement is incorrect because the mission will be launched using PSLV XL launch vehicle. Now look at the third statement. The main objective of mission is to study about the atmosphere and magnetic field of the sun. This statement is correct. The answer is option B, only two. Look at the second question. It is about the rivers and the cities located on the banks of the rivers. So we have to match the pairs correctly. Look at the first pair, the river Chambal and the city Bhopal. This pair is incorrect because Bhopal is located on the banks of Shipra river. Look at the second pair. We have seen in the discussion that Hyderabad city is located on the banks of Musi river. So this pair is correct. Look at the third pair. Jabalpur city is located on the banks of Narmada river. Yes, this is correct. Look at the fourth pair. Tungabhadra river and Mysore. This is incorrect because Mysore city is located on the banks of Kaveri river. So the first pair and the fourth pair are wrong. So the correct answer is only two. Option A. Now look at the third question. It is about CBI. Here all the four statements are correct. The statements given here are important. So take a note of them. So the answer is option D, all four. This is the quiz question for you today. Try to answer it and post it in the comment section. And this is the main question for you today. Try to write an answer and post it in the comment section. So we have come to the end of our discussion. If you like the video, please share it to your friends and subscribe to Shankar IA's YouTube channel. Thank you.